Hi there, I'm Skitty Vonstadi, CEO of OneWire, and welcome to Open Door. Today we're going to go interview my very good friend, Bill Comfort, who is a legendary figure in the venture capital space. He's seen every different type of deal, big and small, every industry. Let's go see what he's up to. I'm here today with my good friend, Bill Comfort, uh, who's invited me over to his office to talk a little bit about his career in the uh, venture capital world and private equity world. Bill, would love to have you take us from the very beginning. You said you actually knew what you wanted to do. What you find in this world is <clears throat> you can be a doctor. You've got to be really smart, right? If you can't be a doctor, you go down the chain a little bit and you say, okay, fine, I can be an engineer. Uh -huh. You know, engineers have to have a lot of smarts. Then if you can't be an engineer, you say, I'll be a school teacher, because they're pretty smart. If you can't be a school teacher, et cetera, I'll be a lawyer. Then after you go through all the professions, you turn around and say, I tell you what, I'm not smart enough for any of those, I'll just be a businessman. <laughs> and what you find is, that's where it might ends up. Now, then you launch the career and the path. Uh -huh over a period, and you look out five years and ten years, and you'll find that the businessman will cross over in intelligence because they get exposed to so much. Well, tell us literally from, you know, when you graduated from school and your first job, and, you know, obviously you're, I would consider one of the godfathers of venture capital private equity. Um, would love to see how you got from point A to B in your career. Okay, it's very simple. Basically, University of Oklahoma. Uh, they had a combined degree, so the fourth year you go into law school, so you get the law degree in two years. Mm -hmm. Then what you do is you get in the car and you drive to New York. And the reason <laughs> you do that is because <laughs> in Oklahoma and all the uh, t uh, states of that nature, the people are so good. They are fantastic. You can't compete, so mm -hmm. you have to come to New York. The only problem in New York is getting the first job. After you have that, it's easy. Okay. That first job is tough. Investment banking back then, and this was a huge advantage that you all will not have, is you got to do everything. <clears throat> Private placements, venture capital, uh, looked around and did uh, leverage buyouts, and uh, public offerings. So you could do the whole thing. There was a lot of value in doing the whole thing. So you, you worked uh, in investment banking, and then how did you evolve into you know, the, the, the buyout whiz? Well, I'm not, first of all, I didn't. <laughs> okay, so that made us pretty simple stuff. So I basically went to Citibank. They were looking for somebody to head up a corporate finance department. Talk about something easy. You go into Citibank, it's like everywhere you walk, there's money on the floor. You just have to walk around and pick it up, you know, and it was so easy. Uh, two years, I set it up in New York, then I went to uh, London. It was even easier. Nobody did corporate finance in London. Goldman Sachs hadn't come over, Morgan Stanley, went, there was nobody there. And so immediately everybody in the UK, they gave away the uh, deals, came back on the strategic plan of Citibank, uh, and clearly that was interesting. And then Russ Carson and Pat Welch left Citicorp Venture Capital. Uh, Jim Stevens was nice enough and Jim Farley to bring me in to head up that operation. And what was found out very quickly, they had done a couple of buyouts in the past. The buyout business had come back. Uh, Henry Kravis was clearly uh, doing deals, etc., had moved up in size. And so you just moved the venture capital group into a buyout shop. Back then, you didn't have to put up any money, right. you could actually take money off the table. You moved on each year, then it became 10%, then 20%, then 30 and then it's gone as high as 40%. Mm -hmm. Today, you put up 40% every So you're really dealing with real money. So if you go back, your returns were just unbelievable. You couldn't, you just couldn't miss. So I think between 70, uh, 79, and uh, up until about uh, 95, we had rates of return of 40% compounded just so easy. Wow. Unbelievable. What are some of the, uh, are there any deals that you remember that were, uh, you were dealing with some very interesting characters? 
Well, every deal is interesting characters. That's what makes it fun because if you really get down to it, the difference is people, mm -hmm. right? And people is what makes it fun because finance without people would not be. Right. Fun. Over the years, you've met a ton of folks. You've interviewed a ton of folks, I know, because you and I have done a little work in the past. Um, what do you look for in candidates? I mean, what, what makes somebody stand out, somebody that Bill Comfort says, you know what, I need that kid on my team? Turn around and you say, what's the most important thing in a person? Mm -hmm. If you talk to Bob Rubin, he says, this guy is smart. You know, give me a break. What difference does it make if a guy is smart or not? The only difference in smart people is that they're more fun to have around. You've got to have drive. Look at Warren Buffett. What a drive that man has. Yeah. Look at somebody else in another field, the drive that they have, whatever it may be. It, drives come in a lot of different formats, but behind everybody that's successful, there is a drive. What do you think about um, the business of private equity and venture capital today versus when you first started getting into the business? I mean, would you recommend kids coming out of school get into the business? Um, it's a good business. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's a commodity business today. Yeah. Okay. Basically, I used to teach up at uh, Columbia Business School. And what did everybody want? They wanted the flavor of the month. Mm -hmm. Okay. So if trading was the flavor of the month, that's what they wanted. Investment banking, that's what they wanted. Venture capital, that's what they wanted. Uh, LBOs, that's what they wanted. Hedge funds, that's what they want. Most people want the flavor of the month. So the answer is look at what you enjoy. Well, listen, I'm here with Bill Comfort. Bill, I can't thank you enough for taking the time to get together today. Uh, anything else you'd like to say to the young folks out there? Yeah, the guy I'm talking to, Skinny Monster, <laughs> this guy is terrific. He's got a marketing personality like you have <laughs> never seen before. So if you get a chance to see him in person, you'll do yourself a favor, and he can te teach you uh, marketing 101. <laughs> Bill, thanks so much. <laughs>